Hello and welcome to a special Q&A recording of Quo Vadis Aida, one of the 50 official selection titles at the 45th Toronto International Film Festival. Thank you to our audiences for joining us. As an organization still impacted by COVID-19, we need the support of our audiences so that we can continue to present films to future generations and to preserve these important voices. My name is Dorota Lech, and I'm TIPS curator of Central and Eastern European Cinema, as well as the lead programmer for Discovery. I am thrilled to be here with Yasmila Zbanic, director of Kobadis Aida. This film plays as part of Contemporary World Cinema, which is generously sponsored by Sun Life. It is eligible for the People's Choice Award. You can vote for as many films as you like at tiff.net slash vote. Yasmila, thank you for joining us. It is so wonderful to see you and thank you for your beautiful film, which made such an impression on our entire programming team. Welcome. Thank you. I'm, I'm really um, happy that uh, you were able to organize this and that I can say hello like this to the audience. So I'm sorry that I'm not there, but I hope time will change soon so that we can meet. Yes, we all do. Well, I want to start by asking you a few questions about the film. You, it's your fifth feature and you, of course, have a long history of making films about, about Bosnia specifically. Can you tell us about the inspiration for telling this specific story? Um, you know, since uh, fall of Srebrenica in 95, I really wanted to, to do something. I was not still a filmmaker, uh, but I always write, wrote about it. I read everything I could. And then story was growing in me. And uh, to be honest, I was hoping that somebody else will do film about Srebrenica because it's such a huge issue. And, you know, 30,000 people were expelled from their houses and each person had their own, you know, its own story. So it's very uh, difficult to find a way. But the story the story of this woman was um, something that I, um, at the end, I decided to, 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 to follow. Um, she's a fictional character, but I talked to many women of Srebrenica and I made um, kind of combination on, on many things that I, that I learned about it. So, um, yeah, the, the, the unfortunate inspiration came from this huge emotions and, and, and pain that I, uh, look, that I was witnessing when I talked to them. So your writing process came from interviewing and you developed the character as you spoke to people specifically in Srebrenica. Yeah, I, I talked to many women. I watched all this, um, you know, um, witness documents. Um, then at the end, I decided uh, this is my story because she is between two worlds, um, United Nations, um, because she's able to um, listen some of the meetings and know more than ordinary Bosnians. But on the other hand, she's Bosnian and she, she had the same destiny like, like um, everybody else. So this ambiguity was interesting for the for the film. Um, at the beginning, I thought, you know, because political um, issues around Srebrenica were also very interesting, and I thought maybe I should do um, a film about this because it's um, mind blowing what was happening at at, at that time. Um, uh, you know, how many political leaders were deciding about destiny of these people, and they didn't have a clue what's what's going on. And it tells also about our world today. You know that so many um, political decisions are being made and. We, we have no idea what, what's, what's going on. So this was also very interesting for me, but then I thought, okay, audience has to connect with their hearts to, to, to characters and to this story. And that's why, you know, I thought, should I do a man as a main character? But at the end, I was closest to, 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 to woman, to Aida. I, since we're on the topic of Aida, can you talk about casting Yasna and how you chose her for this role? She's really incredible in the film and, and Boris as well as, as Mladic, she's fantastic. I understand they're married. Also. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah, they are husband and wife. I met them um, a few years ago when I did uh, my film for those who can tell no tales, uh, which was also in in, in Toronto. And uh, we, um, you know, I, I love their work. They are amazing um, actors. They are also professors of acting, and they, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they are just living the um, acting. Um, um, life in arts of acting. Um, I remember watching their um, Chekhov uh, theater piece 
which was six hours long, but you don't feel it this wow. time. They are so good in it. And when I wrote it, you know, when I'm writing, I, I don't really uh, think of actors. I, ima I am imagining my characters. But uh, when I finished, I gave it to producer to read. And both of us were just immediately saying, okay, this is Jasna Juricic. It's, um, she, she is really the, the one. And uh, for Mladic, we had um, a lot of discussions because everybody knows how he looks like. And then, mm -hmm. uh, at least in our region, everybody knows uh, who Mladic is. But then we thought, um, you know, maybe we should not see him. Maybe the camera should always be behind him. But then we thought, no, we, we should not make a, um, you know, mysterious figure out of him. Mm -hmm. He's a human. He is war criminal, but he's a human being, and we have to show him like that. So then we thought, okay, Boris Isakovich is is the one because he has this, um, you know, he he's an actor who can cover all territories of, um, of characters. He he was in, he was incredibly powerful, and to be honest, when I was watching the film the first time, I wasn't expecting to see Mladic or any of the generals on screen. So when he really appears, it was, I think, the moment when I was watching the film where I thought like, oh, okay, there, there, there's some sort of a shift happening here. I think this is going to be even more personal than than I imagined somehow. And that really came through, especially in the in the scene you do with the the interview when they have the represent representatives from the refugee, the refugee camp come in to meet with the, the general. It's incredibly powerful did, did this did this exact scene happen was this a real meeting yes yeah. the, um, you know when we were uh when i was writing the script um i had to follow a lot of things that were uh that really happened mm -hmm. uh but also i had to modify some some stuff for the for the film you know to keep the facts but also to be sure that uh, audience will be able to follow the story you know not to be mm -hmm word by repetitions and so on. So like these meetings with representatives were happening several times, you know, with Karamans and Mladic in Hotel Fontana. But I thought, okay, I need to put in, in one. So it's a combination of these meetings that happened. Um, and actually you can find them on YouTube. Many of, um, of this uh, dialogue of Mladic is um, just a transcript really. So he was um, saying the, these sentences and um, that was the behavior that uh, Boris and I studied. But then I thought, okay, uh, you know, and it, Boris did uh, his own language, which was needed for this story. Mm -hmm. uh, the, other, the other question I have specifically about representation, you know, there are so many stories about how the United Nations failed the people. And you, you have a few of these, and I'm thinking specifically of one where the United Nations soldier outs the young boy who is who is dressed like a girl to escape. Were these real stories as well that you heard from people? Yes, yes. These are the uh, stories that I got from uh, witnesses, uh, from documents that I that I read, and some stories I got uh, talk by talking to people. Unfortunately, this happened. Um, you know, UN, uh, the, the, the position of UN was very complicated. Uh, they were, in a way, abandoned by uh, the headquarters, and uh, it was a political decision to just, you know, give up Srebrenica, but uh, they didn't tell them. Um, I, you know, as a Bosnian, I'm, uh, I was very angry on UN and how they uh, behaved and how they let uh, people go. Um, and then when I started researching, I realized that there is a, a difference between, you know, this headquarters and, and commanders and people who were there, like um, the one the who's children. Gone. They were 18 years old, you know, and it was their first trip abroad. They didn't have a clue where are they. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, that doesn't um, uh, excuse yeah. the, the uh, Karamans and, and, and Franken because there were cases where UN was um, in a way abandoned by, by political decisions, you know, that, that um, big guys didn't want to... In, get involved or give us support. But there were some, actually, um, a case of a Canadian UN 
who um, who who invited all civilians in, even soldiers. In it, it happened in Croatia during the um, '95 storm uh, operation, and um, this commander said, "Okay, all people come in, and I don't let anybody out. I don't let uh, soldiers inside to talk to uh, people." So he managed to to save all civilians. So even mm. when we are talking about political decisions, about commanders not being able to, to act because they didn't have a thing, I still feel we as a human beings have freedom uh, and, and possibility to act as human beings, even in the, in the smallest territory which is given to us. You know, if, if we have enough empathy, if we have enough solidarity. You know, so I think even if we are living in difficult times where many political decisions are not in favor of our um, human structures um, and uh, ruining our institutions uh, that are supposed to, um, you know, that are supposed to protect us, mm -hmm. I think we still have a lot of freedom to, to behave like human beings. I agree. I, I'm, I'm thinking now of what I think is the most beautiful film in the scene and, and probably for me the most difficult to watch, which is at the end when the women are going to look at the different bones to try to identify their relatives. I really like, whew, I, and I'm wondering uh, how it was to shoot this scene for you. And in fact, what was the hardest scene to shoot? Yeah, this scene was uh, very uh, specific because it was, we, we, it was the last scene of the film um, uh, that we shot. It was, um, you know, we had so many actors from all over the world that uh, the making a schedule um, to, to film was a nightmare. So we had the scene shot on 11 of July, which is the year of, which is the wow. date of the anniversary. It was by accident and... Oh, wow. You know, all day, all crew was very silent and, and respectful. And then we had this scene uh, on that day. And I um, we decided not to show um, Yasna uh, where the actress, not to tell her where are the bones. And um, we would just uh, follow her with camera. And when she finds them, she finds them. Mm -hmm. um, so she really didn't know where the bones are, where is this clothes that she can recognize. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was walking and it was this shot. And then we, you know, everybody was crying on a set, really on uh, me, my, my camera woman, Christine Meyer behind the camera. Um, and then we thought, okay, we have to do another one, um, you know, just to be covered by, uh, you know, something happens with the with material. But, um, you know, we shot second one when we thought, no, that one was it. That, that was it. This other one doesn't make any sense. Yeah, this th that was the only one which we had. <laughs> I, I can't, I, it, it's shocking now to hear that that's what you shot on July 11th also. That must have been incredibly powerful. Wow. Uh, I Honestly, Asmila, I, I wish that we could continue talking with you for another hour. I especially wish that you could be in Toronto with our audiences. I know you have such fans here. This is your third film playing at the festival and I wish we could welcome you, uh, but you'll be back and hopefully everything will be back to normal soon. And I just wanna thank you for being with us. I'm, I'm incredibly moved by what you just said. I, I don't even remember what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, stay safe and healthy. And this is really, yeah, we we are together in this, and we will overcome it until we meet again. Yes. <laughs> Ciao. Bye bye.